Hey guys, this is North back again with another video. Today's video, I'm just gonna talk to you about 10 of my most important fragrances within my collection. So these are some of the best of the best. I'm only choosing 10. I do have um, a few more fragrances that I think are in that category. Maybe I'll do a part two at some point, but these are 10 fragrances that I wanna talk about. They live rent free in my head. I think about them all the time. So let's go ahead and get it going. So the first fragrance I wanna go ahead and get out of the way is from the Armani Privé line, and this one is Myrrh Imperial. Now, a lot of the fragrances in this particular video are gonna be like categorized ambery type of scents. Myrrh Imperial is my all-time favorite Armani Privé. I had a 100 ml bottle, I told the story, and then I happen to come across a 250 ml bottle of this one, you know, in packaging. It wasn't a test or anything. So I found that I sold the 100 ml to fund getting this one. And I pretty much got this one for what I sold the 100 ml for. Now, the 100 ml was a couple years older than this one, but I wanted to pick it up because I just love Merlin Imperial so much that. Uh, I just wanted to get the biggest bottle possible. I hardly <laughs> ever even wear it. You know, like I said, it just lives in my mind. Now, Myrrh Imperial was released in 2013. Some of the notes on it are myrrh, benzoin, vanilla, and saffron. To me, um, I haven't smelled, um, right now, people were saying like myrrh is having a moment. Tom Ford came out with a myrrh fragrance. Um, Lilabo came out with the Myrrh 55 that people said smells basically just like jasmine. It's not a Myrrh scent, but I can't imagine a like resinous, vanillic, Myrrh centered scent that would be better than this. I'm sure that the Tom Ford is not better than this. This is discontinued and this 250 ml bottle is impossible to find. So that's the first fragrance I want to mention. The next fragrance I wanna go ahead and get out of the way is from the house of MDCI Parfums, and this one is Cheaper Palatin. This is the Silk Road edition. I do have the 75 ml. This, again, is in my top five of all time favorite fragrances. Uh, it was released in 2012. Some of the notes on it are aldehydes, galbanum, galbanum um, clementine, plum, tolu balsam, benzoin, and styrax. And this one is, I'm not sure, I'm gonna do a cheaper list. I'm sort of on the fence whether or not this may not be my favorite cheaper. It's one of my favorite fragrances, but I don't know. Um, I'm, I'll, I'll keep that one up in the air until I try to do a top 10 list again. So that's the next one. Now these fragrances aren't ranked. Uh, they're not in any particular order if I didn't mention that before. But uh, the next one I want to mention is from the House of Diptyque, and this one is Benjuan Bohem. This particular fragrance is one that lived up to the expectation. The, uh, the perfume guy was always talked about it, talked about it, um, and I was able to get a bottle off of uh, Selfridges, had it shipped all the way here from the UK, and again, it's one of my favorite scents. I just love like a just resinous type of scents, but this one is vanillic as well. It's different than Myrrh Imperial because it has the benzoin. So uh, Benjoin Bohem was released in 2015. The notes on it are benzoin, sandalwood, uh, patchouli, and angelica. And this one, uh, I'm sure it'll be, hopefully it'll smell just as good when they put it in the uh, the normal bottles. If it is, I'll probably just buy a bottle Anyways, even though most of these I don't even wear that much because I just, they're like in my, my Hall of Fame type of list. But I need to get to it, especially when it gets cooler. Right now it's still a little bit too hot. Let's keep it moving. The next fragrance is from the house of Ormond Jane. This is the very first fragrance um, that I ever purchased from the house. It also was a complete blind buy and it's in, it turned into one of the most uh, important fragrances in my collection. And this one is Tolu. Tolu was released in 2002, so it's quite old. This one has orange blossom, juniper, clary sage, rose, orchid, lily of the valley, tolu balsam, and frankincense. I don't get a lot of frankincense from it, but I just love the way that the it opens with the orange blossom and then it just mellows out into this like slightly, slightly powdery, like ambery feel. This one is a, a, a one of a kind type of scent as well. I've never smelled anything that smells 
uh, quite like it. Do you know anything that smells like Tolu? Let me know. So let's go ahead and keep it moving. The next fragrance I want to mention is from the house of Frederick Mall, and this one is Dawn. This particular fragrance is one, if not the best incense fragrance that I own. It is very expensive. Again, it's my most expensive fragrance that I bought, but when I smelled it, I just had to have it in my collection so much that the majority of the incense based fragrances I've had in my collection, I've since gotten rid of, and I just want to have the best of the best. And this one is definitely one of them. Dawn was released in 2018. Uh, some of the notes on it are pink pepper, rose, frankincense, oud, laptinum, vetiver, and oak moss. Now, what I get mostly from Dawn is just like smoky incense, and then I do get some rose from it in the dry down. All of these in this particular uh, line, I forget what it's called, like the um, Arabian Nights or something like that, I'm sure, line are all beastly, like big projecting fragrances. This is just a, a great incense based fragrance. It's one that I, even though the, of the price tag, because I paid retail for it, I had to uh, have in my collection after testing it. Let's keep it moving. The next fragrance I want to mention is from the house of Tom Ford. This is probably my holy grail discontinued fragrance that I have in my collection. And I have a couple of them, but this was one that I really wanted. And it's also one that lived up to ex expectation as far as trying to find a discontinued scent and paying more than retail for it. And this one is Sahar Noir. This is one of the best incense fragrances ever made as well. I don't think it's as all around good as Dawn, but it came out before Dawn. And this one, what I like about it is, are the notes in it, which are Lathanum, Cypress, the beeswax in it, rose, uh, benzoin, oud, and vanilla. And this is again, one of the best incense-based fragrances in the game. It's one of the best Tom Ford fragrances ever made. And um, I guess they were saying that it wasn't a hit because they marketed towards women instead of either unisex or as men. So it got discontinued and now it's going for ridiculous prices. Even for me, what I paid for this was sort of ridiculous, but not as ridiculous as what I paid for Dawn. Let's keep it moving. The next fragrance is from the House of Mugler. To me, this is the best white musk fragrance uh, out. And this one is called Over the Musk. This one, I had a tester bottle of it. That's how I fell in love with it. And then I found this bottle um, brand new in the box and I got it for a steal. Over the Musk was released in 2014. Some of the notes on it are uh, musk, cashmere wood, musk mallow, and black pepper. The musk mallow is what I really enjoy about this. Uh, this particular one uh, is discontinued. Uh, it still can be found. I'm not sure what it's going for, and I'm also not sure why my bottle level is so low. Let's keep it moving. The next two fragrances will be from the house of Chanel. The first one I wanna mention is Queer de Russie, which this is the Eau de Toilette concentration. Um, this one I was luckily uh, had the opportunity to find uh, in my gray market spot. This one was released in 2007, the Eau de Toilette version. And some of the notes on it are orange blossom, leather, birch, tobacco. To me, this is the best leather, the best leather fragrance in the game. Uh, I like this more than anything because it's animalic, uh, it's classy, uh, has different facet to it, facets to it, and um, I just enjoy it. I just don't, uh, you know, like most of the things when you have a large collection, you don't get to wear things as much as you would like to. But this is a discontinued or toilet concentration, so I don't want to burn through it. Almost finished. The next fragrance again from the house of Chanel. This is my favorite Chanel fragrance, and this one is number 22. This is the Eau de Parfum concentration, uh, which was released in 2016. This is a floral aldehyde fragrance, and the notes on it are aldehyde, Cilia Valley, Neroli, jasmine, pink pepper, and vanilla. And uh, it's just the best soapy aldehydic scent um, that you can find. Even buying a 200 ml of this is a better steal than buying the uh, aldehyde 44 or whatever it's called from La Labo. Uh, this is my most important Chanel in my collection. Even more important than Queer de Russie, even though I really do enjoy that as well. 
This one I think is a little bit more versatile. All right, moving on to the last one. And the last fragrance I wanna mention is from the House of Guerlain. If you don't already know, this one is Mitsuko. This is the new vintage uh, extract that I got in. This is from the year 1985. I got it all the way in from Japan. Uh, Mitsuko was released in 1919. Some of the notes on this one are bergamot, jasmine, rose, peach, spices, oak moss, cinnamon, and amber. And to me, this is just one of the all time greatest scents in any concentration. Of course, this is gonna um, project and be crazy because I wore this a little bit, but any concentration that you get, I don't know about the Eau de Cologne, but I have uh, a number of Eau de Parfums, but even different years, you still get the essence of what Mitsuko is. It's not like uh, some other fragrances where the newer version can't even hold a candle to something that's vintage. This one, uh, with Mitsuko, it is better to get like maybe like some older bat batches, like maybe early 2000s, than maybe the current one. But even the current one, again, you really get the essence of what Mitsuko is. It isn't that um, maybe not as deep, but you, it's still a well-crafted scent. And this one is, again, one of my most important scents. So there you have it. Those are 10 of my most important fragrances in my collection. What are some of your most important fragrances in your collection? This isn't necessarily a... Uh, um, 10 for life or anything like that. These are just fragrances that I believe this are, are important and, and hold a specific um, like place, of course, in my mind and in my heart, but then also uh, to a certain extent for, you know, for material things. And But then also um, they're like a hall of fame, like the best white musk fragrance and some of my favorite cheaper and the best leather. So I may do a part two. We'll see what we're going to do. Uh, but please let me know what some of your uh, most important fragrances are in the comments. Please like, comment, and subscribe. I'll see you on the next one, guys. Peace.